Captain and Tangela too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to you! Quite a few humans living on this small planet. Some might think perhaps a good deal too many. And that's the topic of tonight's film. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent Van Dahl. The tall gentleman over to this end of your television screen is my dutiful and dedicated director of this vast manor, the industrious Mr. Livingston. And the adorable tiny sprite over to this side, who appears to be channeling the Victorian era via retroactively designed clothing and accessories fashioned in a Jules Verne motif, would be my delightfully destructive doormate, Tangela. And have we a simply spectacular program in store just for you? First up, we shall screen a most interesting film from 1971 in Taiwan. What in God's name was that? That would be the cruise ship Tuna of the Sea. Cruise ship? Bodega Harbor cannot even facilitate large yachts, let alone an entire... Cruise ship? The skipper of that craft has come to that conclusion as well. They are attempting to tug it back out to sea as we speak. Now what's wrong with you? Oh my goodness. She was looking forward to chucking raw Easter eggs at a large group of unsuspecting passengers. Onward. Tonight we shall screen a film entitled The Last Child from 1971. Set in a dystopian near future where a grossly overpopulated United States dictates that couples can have only one child. When the Millers decide to have a second child, they have no choice but to escape their Orwellian government and head up to Canada, where it would appear that people can have as many babies as they are able to conceive. Don't look at me like that. I didn't pen the bloody plot. Starring Michael Cole from The Mod Squad, Janet Margolin from David and Lisa, and Ed Asner from Mary Tyler Moore, the psychological thriller will surely amuse you. Especially if you tell your children as they watch that this could happen with any government at any time, and should it occur, you'd have to draw straws to see which child would have to escape to go work in the circus. Oh, stop, I merely jest. And rhyming with the word jest is the word guest, and it appears that we are lacking in that particular department tonight. But fret not, weary viewers, we shall check in with the denizens of the household, and perhaps even persuade our director Tom to sit in for a segment. So don't go away, for it is to be another night of dystopian fright, right here on Creature Features! No, love. Please do not hijack the captain of the tuna of the sea and force him to be a guest. They need his skills to back out the boat. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Ha! 
Happy Almost Easter and welcome to Creature Features. You know, it's not too often we do a show before Easter. I beg your pardon? No, I'm, I, I'm jesting. It's, it's, it's almost every Easter that we do. Well, Easter's always, always on Sunday, right? That's how we do it before. I don't know why. Why, why is Easter always on Sunday? How do they figure that out? Is it like a, a first Sunday of the month type thing? It's 40 days after Lent. Or 40 days after. Oh, my goodness. This thing's living. So, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, if you're just joining us for the first time, uh, this is a chick that is not a chick. That is Tangella, and she is uh, making art because uh, she decided that steampunk is is the proper fashion for Easter, so she's dressed for Easter. These, this is her Easter garment. Primary. Right? right? What Easter. should I wear tomorrow? Where are you going? I don't know. Well, I'm going to, I'm go, going to go Easter hunt, egg hunting, right? Oh, I'll have to make yeah. some eggs then. No, she's already taken care of it. I just don't know where the eggs came from. What kind of animal they are. That is a good I, question. You know, I think they're possibly rattlesnake eggs. Or right. alligator. Alligator? No. Not too many around here. So our movie tonight is The Last Child from 1971. And, uh, you know, I recall seeing this film on a VHS tape. And apparently, at the time, it was quite controversial because it was like, uh, you know, the whole one-child law being applied here in the United States, which would be unconventional, would it not? It would be unconventional. Indeed. Right, right. But maybe necessary one day. But right now, thankfully not. But uh, it, was a, it was a big deal when it came out originally. And uh, maybe it'll be a, a big deal tonight. Or maybe you'll just laugh like the rest of us. Because Ed Asner does not make a very good bad guy. No, he's, he's got a jolly face. He, how, how can a man with a jolly face be a bad guy? I think he looks rather sour. No, he looks he looks like he's angry because he missed a bus. But well, he does not look angry enough to be a, a killer, a hired killer or anything like that. Right? Is that what he is? No, he's he works for the government to to capture these people. So yeah. I think he's like a G man. A government man. A government man, yes. Oh. Anyways, we're going to watch that. Uh, we're going to visit with uh, Tangela Livingston, uh, maybe Andrew, and our director, Tom. And uh, we're just going to have fun tonight, right? Right. Tangela, are we going to have fun? See, we always have fun when Tangela's here. But she's not always here, so it's, it's not always fun, is it? We still have fun without her, don't we? She's, we have more fun without her. You know, she causes trouble is the problem. No, we go places, and then next thing, you know, she's putting M80s into toilets. Or the store detective are trying to get rid of them. No, well, you cannot put a quarter stick of dynamite into a public loo. No. It, it causes plumbing issues. It also costs a lot of money. Uh, it costs me a lot of money. Anyway, so let's start this film. When we come back, uh, we're going to chat some more. So we will see you on the other side of the break. See you soon. Please. I want my... I'm sorry, ma'am. Oh, you'll have to come with me. Okay. 
Give me my gun. Give her a break, why don't you? Are you talking to me? You got an arrest quota or something? One pregnant woman and a scared little boy, and suddenly it's the policeman's ball. Mister, you're off the coast to a trip downtown. Okay. Don't let them pull at her that way. They're going to hurt her. They're hurting her. Buddy, you have had it, and I mean it. Both of officer. He was just concerned how they were treating a lady. She is pregnant. And she already has a child. That's why she's under arrest. Let's go. Out of the way, Identity card, please, Mr. Sanderson. Look, Sergeant, we were... Please. You're a newspaper man, Mr. Sanderson. I should think you would know better. What about your men who were roughing up a woman? A pregnant woman. You know the law... One child to a family. You don't have any criminal entries on your card, Mr. Sanderson, so we'll overlook this one. Unless you want to file a complaint against the arresting officer, in which case I can give you the forms. I can also give you some advice. If you want to open up this can of peas, you can choke on it. Am I getting through? Your identity card, please, Mr. Miller. Miller. I show you my card. Me and Karen, what do I do? Shh, take it easy. If they don't book you, they'll never check the records. Sorry. Uh, your card, please, Mr. Miller. You're a student, Mr. Miller. Yes, I see also an instructor. Yes. This is an upstate identification number. I'm from Syracuse. How long have you been in the city? A few months. You should have applied for a new number. <sighs> yeah, I know. It, the classes, they, you know, take a lot of time. I suggest you get to it as soon as possible. Meanwhile, you'd be doing your friend a favor if you'd help him keep that temper under control. All right. That's all. Officer. Get this over to Barstow at the population control building. Give this to Mr. Barstow. Oh, he's talking to the assistant director right now. Well, Sergeant O'Connell told me to bring this right over. Oh, okay. Can't we at least discuss this in private in my office? I am gone in 20 minutes, and I've got a report to write. Look, I'm just the middleman. <laughs> I'm just telling you what the director told me. Mm -hmm. I can give you a direct quote. The Baker case was an abomination. Now, that's what he said, Barstow, and I'm sorry. I can feel all those sympathetic vibrations. Please, Mr. Silverman, stop bleeding all over my desk. The director wants a full hearing. Then let him set it up. I couldn't care less. How do I get through to you? Not through my big, oversized, compassionate heart. Look, I'm a cop. 
Never mind what it says on my ID. I'm a COP, cop. I'm not a family counselor. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychologist. If he wants arrests and interrogations, I'm super beautiful. But if he wants backs rubbed, and he knows what he can do with his badge, I suggest he close the pin before he does it. I'm sorry. I, I was trying to help. I, I'm indebted. Honey, that's not the point. It's our identification numbers. They're traceable. Alan, I'm sorry. Karen, you don't know them. You don't know what they're like. They're everywhere. They're every place. And if they find us, you know what they will do. Honey, they, they can't keep track of everyone. We're just two unimportant nobodies out of hundreds of millions of people. Don't call my wife a nobody. Okay? Okay, Mr. Nobody. I promise I'll try to be more careful. Now, hurry up. You know how Howard hates our being late for dinner. What time? 8 p.m. Why don't you call your brother and tell him that we've been kidnapped by Arab slavers? Why don't you just hurry up and get ready? When did you find out Howard was paranoid? I don't hear you. Nothing. What did you say? You're the only girl I know that's beautiful with child, without child, and in between. That doesn't make any sense. Come here. The only thing that makes sense is that I love you. I love your child. If it's a girl, it'll be just like Ellen. You know, she would have been a year old Friday of this week. We'll have another Ellen. This time the child will be strong and healthy and stay with us forever. Welcome back to the show. We are watching The Last Trial. You know, don't go into a dystopian future if you have a baby bump. Don't do it. You'll be arrested and you'll be inspected and uh, that would not be a wonderful thing. Speaking of inspections, what's with the white gloves? It is inspection day today. And you've been like doing the thing. For the household staff. You should see this. He like, he d what do you call it? The white glove test? White glove test. My goodness. So far, so good. What about the top of her head? Check. Check the top of her uh, head for dust. Show me. It's clean. That's new. Yeah, typically she's she's out soiling herself in the in the manure. Right? Indeed. No, she loves her animals. She's gonna do that. And she likes a chick. This one. Yeah, that's ingenious. Can you imagine the mechanical design that had to go into making something like this? It's a yeah. simple... No, I've seen them doing the tiny ones. This require, This was probably designed by Mercedes-Benz because they know motors and mechanisms. Anyways, a fun movie, I think, so far. This cannot be too fun of a movie. I don't think so. Yeah, I think we should show more fun movies on this it's program. It's a bit frightening. That's no, no, no. You know, a film we have not shown in, in quite some time is The Quarterballing Handshake. No. Uh, it's true. It's been quite some time. Since yes, it has been quite some time, and it could be quite longer. No, but it's a fun movie. There's uh, like humor. You humor call it that. This film is depressing. It can be. You know, we 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 
claim to entertain our friends at home every Saturday night. And this is, this is a somewhat depressing film. Yeah, we're heading in this direction. It's a serious subject. No, well, no. But the Chinese have been doing this for years. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about the whole Snoopy Snoopy thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll be there one day. You know, you won't be able to do anything without some G-man saying whether you can or cannot. Oh. Right, right. Who wants to live like that? Anyways, uh, let's get back to the film. And uh, when we come back, I think we should do some mail. Should we not? Yes. We shall do some mail. So uh, stick around. Watch the film. See you on the other side of the break. Nobody lives forever. So they stop medication after 65. So what? Big deal. How many more years has anyone left anyway? You think the government likes passing laws like that? It's the only way, believe me. Shelley, honey, do you have a listening audience in New Jersey? The music is supposed to soothe the savage beast, not wreck the inner ears. If it drowns you out, it's done its job. Flattery from you, my dear? Nothing but flattery. To my nephew and niece, whichever the case, may he or she arrive with a minimum of fuss and bother. He or she, with or without bother, will arrive. And it shall be immortal. I hope so. I fervently hope so. You, um, uh, you think you're doing the right thing? Oh, Howard, no more. We've gone through this so many times. Honey, I'm concerned about them. You're concerned about you. Ha! <laughs> well, well, he's alive. The corpse has risen. Those are the first words that you've uttered since the evening began, Alan. I'll treasure him. This will be the last. I can't compete with you. Oh, well, that's the point. I don't want to compete. I don't want to fight. I simply want to tell you that you're making a big mistake. Which is not your problem. It most certainly is my problem. I happen to hold an executive position with the government. If I get involved with anything illegal, I can be crucified. And I can assure you that there are Judases around, poised, watching, waiting to stick me right between the shoulder blades. Howard, please. If I had the power to prevent this second conception, and I mean this, Karen, I would have stopped it cold. Well, seeing we've been spared your presence in our bed, you don't have that power. So why don't you just relax? Breathe through your nose, take it easy. Or if you're really worried, why don't you turn us over to population control? It just takes a phone call. I'd consider that, Alan. The thought has crossed my mind. But if I did, it would be for your own good. Howard, will you... Karen, will you give me a hand with dinner? Sure. Howard, will you lay off them for a while? I wasn't aware that I was attacking. You always attack. It's a reflex with you. I uh, saw a copy of the Popcorn Report this afternoon. Your name was on it. That was just a little mix-up in the subway. They didn't arrest me. They didn't even take my card. But they started the investigation. Tomorrow, the next day, they'll pick Karen up. You know that. So what? She's more than six months gone. But the baby hasn't been born yet. So you ran from Syracuse here. You didn't think they'd find you, so they found you. Now what? You think you can keep running? Where? Where to? You better face it, Alan. They're not gonna let that baby live. You're the only guy I know that can deliver a funeral oration with a smile. You think all of this pleases me? My own sister? I don't want to see her hurt. But let me tell you something. I learned to be a realist. I don't run away because I don't like the game. I play by the rules because the rules help me to survive. For which you have my condolences. To the way you live, Howard. In a perpetual sweat, walking tiptoed and in agony, in between nightmares. That's a terrible way to live. How right you are. But it's still preferable to six feet of earth. Those with meat permits, please use checkout lanes one and two. Please have your cards ready, shoppers. Mrs. Ellen Miller. Yes? Mrs. Miller, my name is Barstow. I'm an enforcement officer for the Department of Population Control. I wonder if you would come with us. I don't know. 
don't understand. We have a detainment order. This requires you to accompany us to department headquarters. Please, may I call my husband? You'll be permitted to contact please, him please later. Let me call I'm him. sorry, Mrs. Miller. You're under arrest. I suppose this uh, might seem very frightening and confusing to you, but uh, let me assure you that no one here is going to hurt you. In a sense, we're here to help. Now then, you uh, came here from uh, Syracuse? Yes, the last year, after our first child died. Yes, I see. Miller, baby, female. She was only 15 days old. That's unfortunate. Yet I observed from Mrs. Miller's condition the mandatory hysterectomy wasn't performed. Well, we made the appeals to the government office and no one would listen, so we just decided it was hopeless and left town and moved down here. I understand. It's not a very palatable law, is it? Perhaps if we'd practiced Planned Parenthood in the past, it wouldn't be necessary. But now it's the law. One child per family, no more, and no exceptions. But our baby's dead. After having lived longer than 10 days. The law is very specific, Mr. Miller. I know how unfair this must seem to you. The child is gone. Now your wife is facing an operation that will end her ability to bear children. Not so sure I wouldn't have done the same thing if I'd been in your place. Now, when is uh, the child expected, Mrs. Miller? The end of November. Mm -hmm. Have you been experiencing any pains of any kind or any difficulties? No. Good. Now, we're at a very difficult period in the pregnancy, Mrs. Miller. I suppose we could bring on a miscarriage, but at this point, that always carries a danger to the mother. On the other hand, we could wait until the child is actually delivered and then immediately dispose of it. Dispose of it? You're not talking about a piece of garbage. I'm, I'm sorry. I, uh, I apologize. I didn't mean it to sound that way. I'll look both of you. I, I promise you there is no pain for the baby. There's no life to speak of, really. It's just a fleeting moment. It's all done with kindness, quickly, efficiently. You're murdering a baby, but you're doing it kindly. We don't think of it as murdering. We simply can't look at you it that way. You are taking a human life. And that is murder. Every human being has the right to live. No, Mr. Miller, you're wrong. In this day and age, not every human being has the right to live. You and your wife knew that when you conceived this child. You're free to go, Mr. Miller. Mrs. Miller will have to remain with us. We simply have to make sure that you don't disappear again. You'll find it very comfortable here, I assure you. Can I ask you a question? Do you sleep at night? Sometimes. If it's of any help to you, Mr. Miller. Sometimes with vast difficulty.
This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Oh, it's letter time. Oh, it's letter time. Oh, it's letter time. You know, we should do a song called Letter Time. No. He's no fun. He used to be, you know, before the beard and when he had hair on his head, when the hair was not here, but was up here, he, he was a fun bloke. You know, he used to be, he used to, he used to go to Japanese restaurants and speak Japanese. He used to order sushi in that language. Now he goes and he, he speaks American. I doubt that. No, you speak quite American. Anyways, uh, we need to read our mail because our viewers sent it to us. And if we do not read their mail, they would be quite perturbed with us, would they not? Indeed. Indeed. This is from Jason Doobie in Sacramento. Did you say Jason Doobie? It appears to be Doobie. I'm Jason yes. Doob. D Doobie? Dubé. He could be French. Dubé. Dubé in Sacramento. We know this place. I've been to Sacramento. You know, it's the capital of California. And there's a very large building there, which they call the capital of all things. The capital building. No, well, it's the city is called the capital. How can a building be the capital? Because it's the capital building. But they don't call it that. I would have no issue if they simply called it the capital building, but they call it the capital. So I'm confused. I arrive at the capital. And I'm not at the Capitol yet. I have to go to the Capitol building. Oh, what a nicely written note. You know, it's not often that I get handwritten notes that I could read. All right, dear Tangella in the Creature Feature family. I don't think anyone's ever called us that. The family. Creature Feature family. No, it's, it's, it's almost like we're mafia. No, it's think more about like it. there are a lot She's of skeletons. She's got a machine gun, you know. A lot of skeletons in the closet. Speaking of the state that's illegal she could go to jail for that i've been watching enjoying your show each week i love all the classic films and the interactions between the hosts you, you should that sounded like a world war ii fighter i think it's the plane checking on the ship oh no we, we've got a boat stuck in the harbor yeah, yeah, none of the fishermen can get in or out now. It is a there's a, there's a cruise ship stuck in the mouth of Bodega Bay. It's unbelievable. All right, uh, let's see. I love all the classic films and the interactions between the hosts. You should see the interactions between these two when the camera's not rolling. It's, it's, it's not very interesting. I'm a comic book artist and publisher, and a lot of times I'm drawing panels of my latest book while playing your show. I thought you might enjoy my latest vampire comic book called Bite Me. You think there's one in here? It's called Bite Me. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is wonderful. Well, let's look at all these things. This can go. This can be gone. Uh, bite Me. So this is Bite Me. Right? Oh, it even comes in a plastic. That's nice. Now, this way, when he's... Famous, we can sell this for thousands and thousands of dollars because they include the plastic. I thought you might enjoy my latest vampire comic book called Bite Me. But even if comic books aren't your thing, perhaps you'll recognize my sketch on the back. I most certainly do. Look familiar? Uh, thanks for such a cool show, Jason. Doob. Dubé. Dubé. I don't Dubé. know. Dubé. No, no, it's it's a great name. This is this is not you know this uh, this looks like Tangella. somebody much nicer than her. He you know he drew her with kindness in her eyes, 
And, you know, that's, that's where you did not do well, Jason, is because she's not this kind in her eye. She's got, like, an evil look. More like these girls that you did on the front. Something like that. I don't know. I'm not an artist. He gave all this information. Jason Dupe, comic book artist, publisher. Scattered Comics. Very nice. Wonderful. Next up, Mr. Livingston. From Fontana, California. Fontana, California. You know, I think that's down by Los Angeles. And we used to live down by Los Angeles, and then we moved up here. It was called Beverly Hills. Well, before Brentwood it was. Oh, this is wonderful. Look at this beautiful card. This is, uh, what do they call it uh, when they make art like this? Death art? No, no, no. It's like, it's like uh, etched or carved or shaved or something. Oh, I uh, don't recall. It'll come back to wood me. Woodcut. Woodcut. Yes. That's what it's called, woodcut. All right. Let's see what we've got. Oh, wonderfully printed note from Wayne the Buff Beckham. Greetings all. I recently discovered your program through our mutual acquaintance with the Grim Life Collective. You remember them? They were on last week. Yes. She causes all kinds of trouble for them. Yes, indeed. Recovering from hip surgery, binge watching your episodes has been a bomb to my aching bones. Well, it's the first time we've ever been medically graded as a cure for pain. I love it. Vincent, I find your guest interviews especially interesting. You're patient and accepting with guests that seem intent on behavior bordering on rude. She does that all the time. Did anyone ever introduce Tom Sizemore to John Wayne's eminently bad portrayal of Genghis Khan in The Conqueror? You know, we did. We did show him a clip afterwards, and he felt uh, he, f he felt uh, somewhat miffed that uh, he, he was, was surprised. He was. If I could change anything about your program, it would be to increase the number of interludes with the urbane and sophisticated Mr. Livingston, along with the coquettish catastrophe, Miss Tangella. She's a rather coquettish catastrophe, and I shall pinch that line from you on the next introduction, sir. I hope eventually to learn more about the history of the Polter Manor and the often hinted at ghostly residents. Like Vincent, I love a good ghost story. Thanks again to all the good folks at Creature Features for the many hours of entertainment. Best wishes, Wayne the Buff Beckham. P.S. I am, of course, a proud patron. Well, thank you so much for the kind notes and the wonderful card and being a patron. You know, we don't talk about the patron stuff enough, do we? we you know, our management says we need to be pushing that all the time. I just don't like asking people for cash. You know, but I suppose we need it. So, anyways, visit us at the uh, Patreon link below if you want to learn more about becoming a sponsor of the show. It's good to have sponsors, right? It means they Indeed. like us. All right, last one. A package from Tom and Julie Walsh. In Tom and Julie Walsh. That's Gilbert, a, Arizona. Gilbert, Arizona. You know, it's a very hot place, Arizona. I've been there, and. It, well, it's hot. It's gorgeous. It's a yes. beautiful place. All right, what do we got? We've got an L with... Speaking of money. See? Mm. Ask and it shall come. 20 American dollars. Uh, let's see. Vincent, Mr. Livingston, and Tangela. Hello, hello, hello. Encloses a gift for each of you as a token of our appreciation for your clever antics. This one says Livingston. You might as well start opening that. And, uh, oh, I know this one, who this one's for. Look at this. Miss Tangella. Somebody sent you a gift. Oops. Grab it from the top. Oh, there you go. Oh, we also would like to encourage any and all of your fans to put their vote in for the Rondo Awards favorite horror host. Your creativity deserves an award. Thank you all again, Tom and Julie Walsh. You know... That's a, that's the second time in a few weeks this rondo things come up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we used to we used to like think oh maybe we stand a chance at some point, but uh, no, it's it's Sven Gulio who wins that one. Let me see. I run on coffee and horror movies, Mr. Livingston. Let me see this personalized cup. That's oh, gorgeous. Look at this. Someone took a, a lot of time and effort. Yeah, I hope you start like drinking that. your tea out of this instead of that 
decidedly. Nasty brown cup that you always use. P.S. Since you have a love of music, the book encloses in case you have as much trouble with song lyrics as you do movie titles. Well, let's see what they sent me. And it sounds like it's a book called Excuse Me While I Kiss This Guy and Other Misheard Lyrics by Gavin Edwards, illustrated by Chris Kolb. Oh, this is wonderful. I wonder if they got any of my songs in here. I bet they Perhaps. do. No, they only did famous songs. Oh. I failed to write very many famous songs. In fact, I don't think I wrote any, did I? Unfortunately. Unfortunately. No, fortunately, I think. Fortunately for you. And then a wonderful gift of 20 American dollars. Thank you for the cash. It will go to a good cause. Mostly our budget. Is that it? That would be it. That is it for mail. If you'd like to send us an email, send it to the address you see here. Or if you'd like to send us a wonderful box of personalized gifts, send it to the address you see right here. We'll be uh, back soon with uh, somebody else besides Tangela uh, after the next break. Don't go away. See you soon. Name? Karen Drum Miller. Number? I don't know. You don't know your number? I don't remember it. Well, never mind. I'll check your card. Do I have to stay in here? Right, dear. Till when? Well, as long as you must. But when is my hearing? Whenever. What does that mean? Will it be soon? I may. There are others I really couldn't say. When do I get to see my husband again? I couldn't say. Please, you must have visiting hours. Yes, but you'll need a permit. Well, how do I get one? From the deputy director. Well, when can I see him? You should have seen him before you were brought to me. Well, nobody told me. Please, I don't understand. What kind of people please, are you? Please, dear, no outbursts. We're all very happy here. We respect each other's rights. Now, don't upset us. Don't be mean. I'm sorry, Sandy. Our newspaper can't run anything on the Miller problem. Please. How many times have I pushed for one of my stories? Mr. Iverson, once in your life, go out on a limb. Mr. Miller, I'm 64 years old. If I were to come down with uh, hepatitis today, I'd get a couple of days off, a couple of dirty looks, and some pills to see me through. But next month, I'll be 65. You know what I'll get then? A letter from the government telling me I'm only allowed medication to ease the pain. That's all. Man, they just let me die. There are no exceptions. Not for me, not for you. Not for your baby. At least we could try. Please. I'm sorry, Mr. Miller. What you need is some crusading young editor. What you've got is a, a tired old man. When do they take her? This afternoon. I've been trying to call you since 6 o'clock. Where is she now? Population control building. Oh, Howard, you've got to get her out of that place. Oh, just like that, huh? Just like that. Will somebody please tell me how? Howard, twist somebody's arm. Step on somebody. Use, use some of the authority you're always talking about. Alan, what do you want me to do? Walk down there and take her by the hand and walk out? Believe me, this is, this is touchy. I mean, I've got some influence, of course, but I can't make it look like I'm trying to get special treatment. Why don't you call the deputy commissioner? You remember what he told you last night? He might do something. At this hour, it's almost midnight. What am I supposed to do, pick up a phone? Howard, I don't care if it's 12 midnight, 12 noon, or who you call. But you have to help us. We can't leave Karen in that place. There has to be something we can do. If you see out on the far end of a limb, a vulnerable idiot, swinging back and forth like a fig, that's me, Dummy Howard. All right. It, I appreciate it. 
Oh, well, I'm glad you appreciate it. I could get burned for this scorched, and you're appreciative. Hello, Deputy Commissioner Joyce, please. Howard Drum speaking. Oh, I see. Yes, I understand, but it is very important. Yes, sir, I'll hold. He was just going to bed. I hope he's sober. Commissioner? Uh, Howard Drum here. I'm sorry to disturb you at such an ungodly hour, sir, but it is a matter of utmost importance. No, sir. It's uh, about my sister, Karen Miller. This afternoon, she was detained by uh, agents from population control. Yes, sir. She's expecting in about uh, 10 weeks. Yes, sir. Uh, last year, a girl. But she died almost immediately, uh, within a few days. Yes, sir, I understand that. But I thought uh, if we could get her out of there, sir, it is a hard place. And it's not as though she were a criminal. Yes, sir, I'm sure they understand. And the child was just an accident, sir. Oh, yes, sir. The, the law is very clear, sir. And uh, that is not their intention, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Good night and thank you again. We're not going to give up our baby. Alan, believe me. It's the only way. You have no choice. Now, I can get her out of there, but you have to give up the baby. What kind of a man are you? Scared. That kind of a man. idea. I didn't think anything would come of it. Oh, for heaven's sake, why? Less than half an hour ago, I received a call from Joyce, the deputy commissioner. He was outraged, Alan, outraged. Last night, he put his job in, in, in jeopardy for you. Just for me, huh? All right, for me, then. Because I went to him for you. And this is the, this is the thanks I get. This is the appreciation, the, the, the gratitude. Oh, come off it, Howard. You're still standing on your feet, aren't you? You're breathing. You're surviving. That's your big thing, isn't it? Survival? <laughs> That's a crime, huh? That's a sin. That's an unforgivable thing that a man wants to stay alive. Listen, I kept your wife from ten stinking rotten weeks in a detention cell. Your sister? My sister was never pregnant. Your wife, Alan. You're responsible for her. In one hour, one hour, I have to report to the district commissioner. This could be the end for me now. All right, just relax. Settle down. What's done is done. Maybe now that it's out in the open, they'll be forced to make an exception. Well, oh, that's right. Out of a fairy tale. That's what that is. It's euphoria time. It's the happy idiot hour. They're not going to make any exception because you fixed it. So they can. Because it's out in the open, now you get nailed. Howard, what are you going to tell them? Whatever I have to, to protect myself. Wait a minute. She asked you a question. What are you going to tell them? I'm going in there on my hands and knees if necessary. And I hope and pray that they listen to me. And us? I think Karen should return to population control. No, I won't spend another hour there. Not to stay. Can't you see, either of you? This is your only chance. 
I think you ought to let them bring on the baby now. You're not criminals. Once this matter is taken care of, the governor will be satisfied. Karen, please, if not for yourself, just this once, think of me. I am thinking of you, Howard. I'm sorry, but I'm a little sick. Honey. We can't stay here. Not if we want to keep the baby. Then we'll go. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by... The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to Creature Features. We're watching The Last Child, 1971. Uh, no guest tonight, but Andrew has uh, decided to sit in. Well, Tangela sits out. And uh, this film, people over 65 do not get medical treatment. So that means uh, Andrew and I would get medical treatment, but he would not. Right? Right. Right. Uh -huh. Good thing. Good thing. So... Uh, What's new, Andrew? Ugh. All is well. Y yeah. I see you have her. Uh, she gets all the cool toys. I mean, well, oh, look, right. I'm Chicken Little. The sky is falling. Oh, that's not the sky. <laughs> well, you know, uh, she is the child of the household. So uh, you should be getting tools and lumber as a gift you know if you want to send gifts in the mail to Andrew you need to send him tools and lumber right radio would be nice please do not what a radio or a TV be a nice. radio or a TV you know I, I don't think you should watch television do you you might get some ideas he might find better employment somewhere else any case uh, so uh, this this film 65 and over right no medical attention no medical attention. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I, I suppose that's one way to decrease the population, but I, I, I like the one about the one-child rule better. Don't you? Why? Because you know, too many kids can be problematic. Your diaper bill wouldn't be that much. The diaper bill, right? So a lower diaper bill. <laughs> yeah, she is somewhat rather irritating, is she not? Indeed. Somewhat. You know, I think, I think they should send her down to the harbor, and she could help them pull that cruise ship out of the mouth of the harbor don't I you think i think that would be dangerous now she could just appear on the harbor and it would frighten the ship out of the sea or we could throw her off the pier yeah i i don't know if she'd go for that you you, you better be careful andrew you know she would be much nicer to you if you did not always tease her she wouldn't. She's, she's, she's always teasing her all right well when you say we get back to this film right Oh, now he's up to it as well. All right, let's get back to the film. And uh, when we come back, uh, we'll, we're going to talk to Tom, right? I hope Finally, so. Finally, a real guest for me. See you soon.
Portland, Maine. Is the 434 the next train out? That's right. Leaving from gate 11 at 434. How many? Two. One way. Sorry, sir. Your account seems to have been closed. It's impossible. I'll verify that for you, sir. Your car's been red-lighted by population control. You... Sir! Sir! Emergency. Come on. What happened? Say no. They canceled my car. That means yours isn't any good either. Alan, what are we going to do? Stay here till I get back. About the 434 to Portland, Maine. What's the train's first stop? Where can I pick him up? Rochester, Massachusetts. Fine, fine. That's good work. I need the first plane to Boston. I have a car standing by to take me to Dorchester. Yes, sir. Please. Oh, good to see you again, sir. Thank you. It's so long since we've seen you, thought you might have started flying. No, no, no. That's for young men in a desperate hurry. Frankly, I've forgotten what it's like to be desperate. Been reading all your articles. Very interesting. And very ineffectual, I'm afraid. Let's try a little old men's food, shall we? Dry toast and coffee. Very good, sir. And now, what may I do for you young people? Karen? Really, Alan, I'm not hungry. I mean, you hungry. have to get something. It's going to be a long trip. I don't think I can eat anything. Have two club sandwiches and two coffees, please. I'll have a glass of milk. And a glass of milk. And the milk. Right. It's my baby, girl. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The Enforcement Division of the Population Control has asked us to examine all your identification cards. Would you have all the cards ready, please? Alan, what are we going to do? Let me get out of here. Excuse me. I, I hope you don't mind this. Uh, my name is Quincy George. There's a kind of threadbare cliche about things being darkest just before the dawn. Now, could the two of you manage to look as if you believe that aphorism and smile a little? Uh, Alan, is it? And uh, Karen? I... Uh, forgive me, please. I, I couldn't help listening in. Good evening, Mr. George. Oh, good evening, Vince. I missed you on my last trip. I had a touch of the flu. Nothing serious. Thank you, sir. They've asked me to check all the identity cards. Not that I had to see yours, of course. What? Some sort of a problem? 
It seems that a man was robbed at the station in New York. They think that the man that did it might be on this train. Mm, well, I hope you catch him. Oh, Vincent, uh, say hello to my nephew and his wife. Alan, Karen. Vincent is the last vestige of a gentle but dying era. Vincent goes back to the days of the old Chicago Limited, when passenger trains were still a way of life for many of us. How do you do? I wonder, sir, if I might see your identity card. I'm afraid you're out of luck there, Vincent. The children just returned from France, and uh, we barely had time to make this connection. Their, uh, their cards will be issued in Boston. But really, sir, oh, I... Oh, for heaven's sakes, Vincent, how about you? All right, Mr. George. Nice to meet you, too. You seem to have a lot of influence. Some. I did rob that man. And I had to hit him. Oh. Honey, there wasn't anything I could do. He saw me going through his coat. The most unpardonable of the sins, getting caught. And a petty theft, most inexpertly done. I'm afraid, Alan, you're not the criminal type. I suppose you're going to try to run the Canadian border. Well, the young lady condition is obvious. And since the Canadian laws are not quite as barbaric as our own, I assume this would be your objective. You have another child? She died a year ago. A year, a decade. We somehow managed to mourn long after the wreath has been taken down, didn't we? I had three sons. None of them survived the Southeast Asian Wars. <clears throat> so we're going to be in Boston in an hour. I think you'd best come with me. You'll need some help getting across that border. Well, the alternative is getting picked up and returned to the authorities. If you stay with me for a while, Maybe I can be of some help. Why are you doing this? Must you ask, child? Isn't it enough that I want to do it? Jim from Philadelphia. You guys are doing a great job. And you ought to come here to make horror movies because we got a lot of murder going on here. Thank you. Hello, this is Livingston. Apparently, one of my newly acquired domestic duties is to request help for our show financially by asking you to visit our patron page. Your generosity will help keep Creature Features on the air, which I'm not entirely sure is a good thing. However, with only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new programming each week, which apparently some of you curiously enjoy. And should you have the desire to give even more, you might even receive a gift from Ms. Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. What in God's name type of pornography are you watching on my set? No, I'm watching Star Wars. Star Wars? In that little thing? I am. Show me. Show me, show me, show me. Why in God's name would anybody want to watch... Oh, look. It's Luke Skywalker. 
That why, was, would any, this, why would anybody want to watch it like that this? That was one of the only ways you could see it in 1977. 1970? Well, you could go to the, the, the cinema. Yeah, that's it. But at home, for oh. home viewing, this this and the Super 8 movie. Oh, show me the what Super was 8 the only movie. way. That's about eight minutes long. The, I was going to say the entire film. No, it's only about eight minutes. So and, which eight minutes? And it came in black and white silent and also came in color with sound. So this is black and white. That's black and white silent. Yeah. Eight minutes of the film. What, what, yeah. Which eight minutes? It just they take selected scenes and they put yeah. it in there. And, Random uh, scenes. Yeah, you could buy those at Kmart or you could order them through the mail. Ken Films? Ken Films, yeah. Ken Films. Is yeah. this a, a thing? Yeah. So you can find those on eBay now. Right. Uh, what would something like this run? It was probably around $7.50. New? New, yeah. What's it worth now? Uh, you can find that one pretty easily. It's $25 on eBay. $25 yeah. on eBay. And then, of course, they had this, which cartridge come out. They had like six different cartridges. That one looks more valuable. Yeah, that's fine. And it's color. And it's color. And it's color. Yeah. So there's yeah. a big difference. Yeah, we're running a little piece of it here right now so that right. folks yeah. at home can yeah, see of it. Of course, yeah. of course. We have to do this. So what's this... And Over then here. when you actually wanted to see the whole movie in 1982, it came out on VHS. Oh, it's but a videotape. for rental only. Rental only. You could only rent it in 1982. So there was a long list it's of people. It's heavy. Yeah, it is heavy. It's a VHS tape. And, right, but uh, this is, is it special? Why is it so heavy? It has a heavy shell on it, the, the clam oh, shell. Oh, is that is, it? Yeah. Because oh. yeah. Yeah, oh. there's a rental uh, tape. and uh, So you could not own... At that point, no. Unless you did this. You just had the, the Super 8 movies and then the little viewer. I never all. knew so. so. So why was it so restrictive? Uh, at, at first, they just decided to release it as a rental. It wasn't until a few years later that it actually was sold as a VHS tape for home. It's incredible. Okay. And what's that last item? And then this one is the very first issue of uh star wars the very issue. first the issue. very first issue number one show me this, this one's been graded so it's in a plastic uh, case right and uh they're very valuable now especially if they're graded and so uh, this is worth like a million dollars not right? a million dollars but uh actually those are probably 500 to 600 dollars right now for that 600 dollars for a bloody comic that's right and that that one is a 9.2 I believe it 9. is. 9.2, yeah, right? I, and I just saw on eBay today that a 9.8 is going for $9,000. $9,000? $9,000, yeah. For a comic. Amazing. Yeah. And it probably comes in a case like this and they'll never it's, read it, right? It's graded, right. So uh, My goodness. you actually take the comics and send them off to a grader and they degrade them and put them in plastic and, and put the label on it. So can you open this case? Well, if you do, then it loses its value. Ooh. Yeah, so, so it's more of a collectible. How are you supposed to read it? You can't read it. Yeah, you have to buy a lesser value one and read that. Oh, one that's kind of yeah. used. You know, I this is this is one business I would never go into comic books because it's too yeah. confusing and there's far too much uh, technicalities involved. Yeah, but the issue that all these are first because they're all the, the first things to be released and uh, very limited in 1977. Yeah. He has quite a massive collection of, of how would you call it memorabilia memorabilia I mean, yeah. he's got yeah. everything ever made for creature features he's got all these star wars items and more that's true and yeah. then uh what what do you have the most of you think like disney stuff or what do you what do you have no i have quite a bit of star wars uh i've always liked star wars and the, and the first three movies that came out right uh, four five and six right and uh and I have comics and uh, films and, and the tapes. I have the, the original DVDs when they first came out and the posters and, and the figures and stuff like that. Oh, so wonderful. A lot of the, the first ones to be released in the, in the, late, in the 70s. It's an impressive yeah. collection. You yeah. know, once he's done doing the direction on this program, I think he's going to open up the Tom Wersch Museum of the Bazaar. That's true. I'd right. love to do that. Right. And these these will be you could you could go and you could watch a movie like this. Just like this, right? That's right. Right? Yeah. yeah. One one whole minute. One whole minute. That's it. Well speaking of minutes, what do you say we get back to this uh, that film? That would be great. Yes, do that. And uh, when we come back, uh, we're gonna find out what's happening next. So don't you dare go away. See you soon. Bye. Good evening.
evening, John. Good evening, Senator. Did you have a good trip? Very pleasant, thank you. John, say hello to Alan and Karen. They'll be staying with us for a while. Oh, it's a pleasure. May I? Alan, why don't you ride in the front? He called you Senator. Habit pattern. I was in the Senate for nearly 20 years, but I've been out of that august body for nine years now. Still, we cling to our titles as if they were household gods. Please. A lovely car. Thank you. John takes excellent care of it. Maybe someday the government will allow them to be made again. couple staying with me. Very nice young people. She's expecting a baby in a couple of months, and, uh, no. No, they can't. Uh, their first child died shortly after birth, and, uh, they've run away. I, um, I thought maybe we might be able to do something for them through the hospital. Yes, I, I know it's dangerous, but when did we ever let that bother us? Uh, <laughs> good, good. I knew you'd help. Well, come by Friday for dinner and we'll work out the details then. I'd like you to meet them. <laughs> All right. You interested in plants, Alan? Difficult to be interested in something you rarely see. <laughs> Once, for as far as you could see, these hills around here were covered with wildflowers. It was beautiful. Now my fellow man is inching up on me, brick by brick. Senator? I'm not sure if we should stay. Of course you'll stay. It's already been arranged. The baby will be born at the doctor's hospital. Of course, their records will have to be slightly altered. But there'll be no reason for you to lose that child. What can I say? As little as possible. It may well be that I'm doing you no service at all. Once that baby is born, there's no turning back. Then it's that deadly ritual of track covering. And that can be an ugly, relentless procedure, as you well know. It doesn't make any difference, as long as the baby survives. Suppose they catch us. What will happen to the baby? Nothing. Once the birth is recorded in the hospital, no action will be taken against the child. We haven't sunk that low yet. Alan! She's lovely. I'll see that Sam Tyler takes especially good care of her. Now, you make sure that you do the same, hmm? She died several years ago, very quietly. You must miss her very much. Beyond language, I'm afraid. Come, let's uh, sit down and have some coffee. 
but a very, uh, a very gentle woman. I think all of this became too much for her. It frightened her. I sometimes think that she reached the point where she preferred not to live. Senator, may I speak with you, please? Yes, one moment. Uh, uh, help yourself. Want some sugar? Ask him to wait, John. Yes, sir. It seems that the relentless pursuit has already begun. Mr. Barstow from the Department of Population Control is in the hall. Now the question is, do we brazen it out or do we try to hide you two? Mr. George, I wouldn't suggest that. Thank you, John. Please come in, Mr. Barstow. Check me, Mr. George. I am in. Good evening, Mrs. Miller. Mr. George, I represent the Department of Population Control. I think you know why I'm here. Will you please come with me now? Not at all. They are house guests of mine, and the hour is late. Mr. George, you are a very influential man. I'm not unaware of that. As to your own complicity in all of this, I'm willing to forget it. Am I the recipient of this special privilege because of my status? Or my antiquity. But it makes no difference. I'm rather used to having things my own way. And what I particularly want at this moment is to enjoy a quiet evening with some friends. That won't be possible. You have a warrant? You know, that's not necessary. Perhaps not in New York. Here, it most certainly is. Don't be ridiculous. These people are fugitives from justice. Now, Senator, you've done too much already. For please. Me. I have a suggestion, Mr. Barstow. Why don't you leave now and forget that you ever found these people? I'm sure that we don't lack for enough crime and violence and mayhem that you couldn't track down more important prey. If I leave now, Mr. George, keep your doors open because I'll be back with a warrant. If you can find a judge who will issue one. I'll find one. Good. Because for every judge you find, I'll find a higher one who will enjoin you from entering my property. I hope I have made myself perfectly clear. <laughs> Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Mr. Silverman, I can't get a warrant locally. I'm going to Boston to see a federal judge. No, I'm not going to let it alone. I don't care who he is. I posted surveillance on the property to make sure the Millers don't escape. Thank you. I appreciate it. What's the matter? Nothing. Go back to sleep. What's the matter? The police are down by the gate. How long have they been there? I don't know. We're trapped. The baby, they I won't let us go to the hospital. We don't have to worry about that for two weeks. They can't hang around that long. Alan, we have to get I out of here. I don't have any place to go. You know, 
what Mr. George said about his wife not wanting to live in this kind of world. It's the only world we've got. How soon can you get over here? Yes, it's urgent. That's fine, thank you. Damned old fool and your illusion, so longevity. John, another glass of water, please. Yes, sir. Better, sir. You see? There still are wildflowers in the world. <laughs> For you, darling. Alan, you're about as good a horticulturist as you are a criminal. You have just presented your wife with a lovely but all too common weed. Never mind him. It's the thought. Hello, Karen. I tried the bell, but no one answered. May I join you? Please, just give me a moment. I've come to help. I was stopped at the gate, nearly searched. It's quite obvious that you're virtual prisoners in this house. Senator George? I'm Howard Drum, Karen's brother. I'm quite sure that you're convinced that this is the right action to take, but, uh... I'm convinced it's the only action to take. I'm sorry, Senator, but I have to disagree with you. Certainly, I'm concerned about uh, Karen's welfare and the welfare of the child. But what she and her husband have done has alienated the government. I hope it's not too late to rectify that. Senator? I'm afraid it's not up to me, Mr. Drum. Alan and your sister are welcome to stay in my home as long as they wish to. Why don't you wash up? I'm getting a little hungry. You're welcome to stay to lunch, Mr. Drum. Sir, let me be blunt. This morning, the party director phoned Washington. They appeal to you to uphold the laws of the land and not to put yourself in further jeopardy. Senator! The name Quincy George is still respected throughout the country. We all wish it to continue so. You offer me my own good name. What do you offer your sister? Karen, listen to me. The government has decided to grant me a hearing if you'll come back with me now. Will I be able to keep the baby? I'm sure that we can get a suspended sentence on the criminal charges. The baby, Howard. Isn't it enough that I can keep you out of prison? No, Howard, it's not. Leave us alone. Go back to New York. I can't go back. Not without you. Don't you understand that? What do you want me to do? Get on my hands and knees and crawl? I'll do that if you want me to. But you've got to come back with me. Karen, everything I have, everything I have is on the line. I cannot go back alone. Howard, I'm sorry. I know you think you're doing the right thing. Maybe in the end we'll lose everything anyway. I won't give up the baby. Not while I can still run. Uh, I'm Dr. Tyler. I'm expected. Is someone sick, doctor? No, I'm expected for dinner. And the bag. Oh, I always carry it. One never knows. Sudden accident or emergency. May I see it, Doctor? Oh, really, it's of no importance. 
please step out of the car, Doctor, with the bag. Insulin. Really, Doctor, were you expecting a sudden outbreak of diabetes? I have several patients who... I'm sure you do. I assume none of your patients is over 65. That would be breaking the law, Doctor. I know the law, sir. Good. And I'm sure you have a permit for this medication. Not with me. And the patients. Which patients are these medications for? Mr. Barstow, if you will let me explain. My records are all back at the office. I I'm sure you'll find everything in order. Well, surely you know who they are. How many? A dozen? Five? Two? One name, Doctor. I'm sorry. So am I. I'll follow you back to your office. I want to see those records of yours. You, you can come by the office tomorrow. Now, Doctor. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Rolling to Canada in a train to escape. Yeah, the terrible? U.S. Special Forces. You know, this uh, this film was made during the Vietnam War era, right? Yeah, 71, yeah. And so it, there's a parallel between people running from selective service to that's, Canada. That's true. And in this film, they're running to have more babies. It's like baby Or at least baby to, have, Vietnam. to have the baby that she's exactly. pregnant with. Yeah. Right, right. Right. Anyways, welcome back to the show. Uh, we're watching The Last Child, 1971. Uh, interesting film. And uh, we're joined by our director, Tom Wersch, who just showed us a bunch of very interesting Star Wars items. Rare, right? Yes, they are. Very rare. Quite yeah. rare. So, yeah. uh, anyways, you've got a new film coming up. I do. Uh, it's called Up Late with Bob Wilkins. And Bob Wilkins was the original host of this program. Yeah, and there's, uh, it does go into a little more of the history of Creature Features and includes a little bit of what we're doing right now. Right, in right. In the film, yeah. Right. And, uh, but it really is a kind of, I kind of call it a sequel to my first film, which was Watch Horror Films, Keep America Strong. Right. And uh, but this is more from the fan perspective of how they enjoyed the show and how they, you know, really enjoyed Bob. So this is new footage, which I understand you've had restored. Yes. So it looks even better than the way it actually looked on television, right? Yeah, I went back to the original tapes, which were preserved by Bob Wilkins and Bob Shaw. Right. Okay. They, they're the ones that actually kept the tapes. And I went back and had them... Uh, uh, re-digitized and uh, you know it, they just look fantastic 
to begin with, but you did some additional work as I well. I did, I did, and uh, you know, there's a lot of clips in there of, of Bob's show that have never been seen before, so. Amazing, uh, so if you're a Bob Wilkins fan, and I imagine most people who watch our program are a Bob Wilkins fan, you want to see this movie, so you're doing screenings in the area. Correct. And where can they go to find out more? Uh, they should go to GarfieldLaneProductions.com. GarfieldLaneProductions.com, and then all the information will be there with all dates. All the information is there for with theaters and times and, uh, um, and of course, right. as it goes through the months ahead. And then uh, our guest, uh, Derek Zemrak, yes. told us that he's having a special Creature Feature Day. In just a few days from in now. In just a few days. Yeah. And uh, we might pop in and say hello. I hope. No, we, we must. I mean. I'll be there. You no, know, well, that's that's why we're going to go. It's because you're there. And then all our friends will be there. And you know, Mr. Lobo will be Mr. there. Mr. Lobo's coming out. And then out. Lord yeah. Blood Raw. Yes, Miss Misery. Miss Misery. John Stanley. John Stanley. John Stanley. Yeah, it's going to we'll be, be there. So it's going to be a fun day. Fun day at the uh, Orinda. At the Arinda. And yes. then, of course, you can find out more at that uh, Garfield Lane. Productions.com. Right, right. Yeah. All right. Definitely. All right. Well, what do you say we wrap up this film? You get back yeah. in your director's chair. I we'll will. put Tangella there. Okay. I'm going to get her to talk tonight. I'll watch. All right. Off we go. Back to the end of The Last Child. We'll see you soon. Alan, sorry to get you up at this hour, but you're going to have to leave here. No, it's not by choice. Please believe me. If I thought you could remain here safely, I wouldn't ask you to go. They're waiting for us outside. John, is everything ready? Yes, sir. John has prepared this back seat to make it appear as if two people are hiding there. John and I will go to the gate and try to leave. When the police officer looks in the back seat, we'll drive away and hope that he follows us. Now, if he does, that'll give you a chance to get away in Mr. Drum's car. John is a man of many talents. Now, we can't let you do this. They'll catch up with you. That is unimportant at this point. What really matters is that baby. You're gonna have to try to get to Canada. I suggest going north through Vermont and then trying to cross the border on one of the back roads. John has prepared this map. Give this letter to my good friend Jean-Paul de Croix. He's Quebec's deputy finance minister. He'll protect you once you're across that border. I don't think so. I can't permit you to leave. How do you intend on stopping? All I have to do is walk out that door and down to the gate, and I swear to you, I swear to you, I'll do it. It's getting late. We're running out of time. You're not running out of anything. You're the senator. You'll come out of this in brass and on a pedestal. You don't have to worry about survival. But what about us, senator? What about that scrambling, dying little breed at your feet? Think about us. Alan, read that letter, please. Allowed. My dear Jean Paul, this will introduce Alan and Karen Miller. They have fled the United States, fearing for the life of their unborn child. I know you will understand and do what you can to give them asylum. By the time you read this, I will most certainly... I will most certainly be dead. Go on, please. My doctor was detained by the police while bringing me my supply of insulin. By tomorrow it could be over. I knew that this would happen someday. But at least I can put my death to good use. If the Millers find sanctuary in your province, it will be worthwhile. With fondness and gratitude for many years of your warm friendship, I remain.
Quincy George. This is insanity. Surely they'll make an exception in your case. No. I've broken the law long enough. I thought that if I stayed alive, maybe, just maybe, I could help instill some saneness in this world of ours. But I failed. I've lost my battle. But maybe I've won the war. One child will be born. One young couple will break through this maze of cannibalistic law. And that will scale the hell out of them. Because they know that another will try. And then another. And when that happens, and it will, Mr. Crumb, they'll have to admit the flaw in the fabric and the law will be changed. I'd like to be part of that. Yes, there were worse things than dying. Living without pride or point. I think it was Horace Mann who once said, a man should be ashamed to die unless he's won some victory for humanity. John, open the doors. Alan, would you turn that light off, please? Allow me to win just one small victory for humanity. Will you do that? Remember now, stay off the turnpike. Just follow the map. When you get close to that border, just barrel your way across any way you can. That letter will protect you. That's me. said me fool. I always figured he was crazy, but I never thought he was stupid. All right, let's go. You're under arrest, mister, and don't make me use this. for that, go ahead. Because if that's what we've come to, I don't think our baby will be missing much. Neither will we. Stop! We better get out of here. Come. It's a little too late to worry about that now, isn't it?
This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. How's the gas? We'll make it. How do you feel? Okay. Negotiations will continue in Paris next week. One of the country's finest patriots died this morning at the age of 72. Quincy George, former senator from Massachusetts, 
was admitted to Lexington General Hospital this morning, where he died shortly after his arrival. The cause of death was not specified. Senator George was the author of many major bills, often dealing with personal liberties. He retired from the Senate nine years ago and had been living alone in his home at Dorchester. The president has expressed shock and a sense of deep personal loss. You may remember... Uh-oh. Barstow is dead. I can tell him that you forced me to go with you. Why, Howard? Shelley's back there. Shelley and some loose ends of a misbegotten life. Have Shelley join you here. Don't take the chance. <laughs> Play it safe. I've made a career out of that. How did you describe it, Alan? Tiptoe and in agony. Wasn't that it? Maybe we can change it. Maybe some of us can really give it a try. No, it isn't that I've suddenly uh, gotten brave, Alan. It's just that I've run out of fear. Anyway, act as though you're shooting at me. Have some fun for a change. Cover your ears. Yes, I'm all right. Thank you. I'm uh, Howard Drum. They took me hostage. I managed to get away after they stopped the car. Shall we go in there after him? You know better than that. Uh, Sergeant, you've got to get me to a telephone. I have to talk to party headquarters. All right, let's go. Nothing we can do now.
You know, she does keep the spirit in the household. Yes. Livingston and I have been decorated by you know whom. I think it's an evil spirit. She's indeed somewhat slightly evil. Anyways, uh, that is the end of The Last Child. You know, Ed Asner went off a cliff and, and, and died. The bad guy dies. No, well, that's what he gets for not being on the Mary Tyler Moore program. He, he went outside of his lane and he went off a cliff. So, uh, anyways, interesting movie. I know it wasn't like the typical horror sci-fi we show, but it was it was somewhat sci-fi like, right? I mean, yes. Future dystopia. It could have been like that, but it wasn't, thankfully. And uh, maybe we'll show this movie again in uh, I don't know nine nine hundred days, right? A thousand days. A thousand days. We'll show it again in a thousand days, and then maybe it'll be better by that time. But uh, anyways, uh, so you know, she's been bothering me. Because she wants to go to Fiji. Why? Because she she wants to go swimming with the pigs in the ocean. I believe they do that in the Bahamas. Well, of course they do it in the Bahamas because they saw how fun it was in Fiji, right? I believe that is incorrect. Are you are you saying they only do mm. it in the Bahamas? Their their motto is it's better in the Bahamas. Oh, well maybe we could do a thing where we swim with the mollusks. In Fiji. Perhaps. Right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm confused about complicated things. Anyways, I, you know, I think I'm, I have a way to get her to, uh, to cooperate if I take her to Fiji. Well, Anyways, uh, that's it for this week, right? I believe that's it. That's it. And you've got anything <clears throat> interesting going on besides Easter and all that? The staff passed the inspection. Oh, that's good. Yeah. He's, he's always inspecting on Saturday nights because they're not here. So he doesn't have to yell at them because he's actually a rather nice guy. I do not yell. Oh, I've heard him yell, but mostly at her. Right? Right. Anyways, uh, that's it for this week. Next week, uh, I, I, I don't know what's going on next week. Do we know what's going on next week? We've got a big guest coming soon. Soon? No, I, I think we've got uh, a, a wrestler, a female wrestler coming next week. Uh, maybe, maybe she'll wrestle. I believe she's a cage fighter. A cage fighter. Cage fighter. A cage fighter. So we're going to cage fighter next week and uh, some good movie of some kind, right? We're working on that, right? Yes, we are. And a good movie. And then, of course, we'll all be here. So uh, maybe you'll come back and join us, right? Right? Right. Right. All right. We will see you next week. We love you. Have a wonderful Easter. And don't eat all the eggs and don't eat too much candy. And remember, do not give chocolate to your dog because it will make him sick, right? It poisons them. Oh, that's right. All right. We'll see you next time. So, uh, Tangella, I have an offer you cannot refuse. I would like you, for my taking you to Fiji, to tell the audience what your favorite movie is using your speaking voice. That's the deal. <laughs>